everybody so good to see you all let's just uh let's take down the powerpoint for a second so we can see all these beautiful faces greetings good evening from wherever you're calling in from my name's eva i'm co-hosting this event with my um dear co-host from uh the thrive street choir julian hi everyone welcome I'm so glad to see all your faces and all the folks joining. We'll probably have people slowly filtering in, so feel free if you just got in to continue saying hello in the chat and telling us all where you're calling in from. And um, I'll, I'll get us going on getting oriented for the evening. So uh, my name is Julian. I go by she and they. I don't have my pronouns here on uh, my Zoom video um, because I'm technologically not so advanced, but I go by she and they, and I'm calling in from the East Bay, Bay Area, from Ohlone Territory. And um, I'm going to just welcome us and orient us here to the space tonight. So first thing, we'll just go over a general uh, outline for the evening. Um, and how it's going to look. And um, we'll have a few uh, just guidelines to guide us through the night put up at, at some point. Um, one, of, one of the co-hosts here will put up a few of the guidelines as we get to that point in the evening so we can just take a look at it. So first, how the evening is going to go is we're going to have about 10 minutes here of um, introductions and orienting to the to our gathering here tonight. And then we're gonna have a um, panel discussion with some folks that have joined us from Thrive Street Choir who have been doing uh, work of 
creating music as part of social movement building. Um, and we're gonna have some question and answers and some discussion with them. And just hear a little bit about their experience of doing that work. And then we'll have uh, a little bit of time, hopefully, for a little bit of uh, audience questions um, and, and, and uh, feedback. And then we're going to have um, some time for community breakout rooms and sharing amongst uh, all of us as community um, about you know, what got us here tonight and about our own personal experiences and relationship to music and how it pertains to this idea of building movements together and um, change work. And uh, then we are going to come back and be together for a few minutes to kind of debrief what we talked about um, in our breakout rooms. And then we're going to have a little introduction um, and a little more info for uh, Thrive Street Choir particularly. Um, for those of you who might be new to Thrive Street Choir and not know much about it, or its, or, or its origins. So we'll take a few minutes to, to, to learn more about Thrive Street Choir. And then we're gonna have a closing and that will be our evening. So that's how the, the general flow of the evening is gonna go. And I will just ask any of you to take care of your uh, needs as needed throughout the night because we're not gonna have a specific time to take a break or anything. So please just take care of whatever you need and on your own time. And then, um, Masami, if you'll put up just the, the few guidelines that we um, brought up together real quick on the screen and we can take a look at them. So a few things just to logistically keep everything um, flowing well. Please stay on mute uh, on, unless you're talking and your mute button is in the bot should be in the bottom left of your screen if you're not familiar, if you're not very familiar with Zoom. Um, and we are recording this event, so keep it, that in mind if you want to turn off your video and you don't want your face recorded. And then for our sharing portion of the evening, um, just be mindful of, you know, what, what stories people are sharing and to honor this space as a place that those stories can be shared and we can just hold them here and uh, take, take the lessons that you may gather from the stories but not the stories themselves. And then um, also when we're sharing together, just to be mindful of this idea of take space, make space. And so just to try to be aware of how much time everyone is allotted and leave space for everyone to have uh, their, their portion to share. So those are um, just a few things to keep in mind. We can come back to now sharing our faces with one another. So I am I'm fairly new to Thrive Street Choir. I just uh, started on the organizing team, you know, in the early summer, I believe. So I'm fairly new to, the, to Thrive Street Choir as an entity altogether. Um, and I'm very honored to be able to be here and co-host this event tonight. And I'll just share a little bit about where this event came from, the idea of this event. And it was really a simple, a simple um, idea that in this time, especially in COVID time, when it's hard to gather and it's hard to be doing um, the connect, connecting within community, how can we create space to just connect in with each other and to share our, our bond around music, our bond around movement building and change work, to share in our love for these things and and to uh, create space to allow uh, things to percolate and come to fruition simply through sharing, sharing together. And so it was a really basic, a basic concept that we started with for this, for this uh, event uh, tonight. And, um, you know, for me, a little bit about, about where I'm coming from and hosting this event. Uh, at this point in my life, I've been committed to doing various forms of grassroots organizing and what would be considered movement building for my whole adult life, which would be a, the last 15 or so years. And I'm now a Divinity School uh, student, and I'm really thinking about sustainability and what it means to be, you know, committed 
to freedom work for the long haul. And for me, that has very much to do with freedom work for the spirit, for the heart, and for the body in terms of all aspects of my life and my being. And music for me uh, is really a tangible way to help me to stay connected to my body and to my heart. And it became, it started to come together as a huge part of my own commitment to change work and movement building work. Uh, when I really started to feel the way in which it cared for the health of my heart and my spirit so profoundly. And those are two things that for me are just the focus every step of the way. Um, and one other aspect for me, just to orient us around, you know, to start thinking about what we all came here with and what drew us here. The fact for me that music is this connection into my heart is a way in which in the line of fire of stressful situ scenarios, situations that particularly can be so charged with movement building and change work, it's this very direct way to keep me aligned um, and avoiding the kind of bypass that can happen when my intellect tries to take over because of that stressful scenario and can suppress the heart and the knowing of the heart and silence the heart. So for me, these were the things that, that I came to really wanting to um, involve myself and invest myself in this work and, um, and why I wanted to help co-host this event tonight to just share in these concepts and, and see what we can build uh, together with them. And so, uh, Eva, if there's anything now that you want to um, add on to how we came about building this event. That was so beautiful. Not too much to add, but um, welcome if you're just joining. And, you know, as the Thrive Street Choir, one of the Thrive Street Choir co-founders, I've just been dreaming of a space where we can come together with the people who aren't necessarily in some famous choir, but just people who love music and love justice and the intersection of those two things. And I really want to hear from different people on this call and build community um, and gather our strength for probably this fall as we're going to need to go back out and sing in the streets, <laughs> um, fortunately and unfortunately. Uh, I also know that you could be watching the presidential debate tonight. So thanks for choosing this. You can watch it later. And hopefully this will be really soul nourishing for you. Um, so, Julian, would you um, kick us off with a, a, an, an acknowledgement? Mm -hmm. So I want to start, uh, I want to start our landing here together uh, with just taking a moment to settle in, notice how you are in your body, and just take a moment to find a way that you can be a little more comfortable, first of all, so we can all just be here uh, in our bodies together. And then I want to start with a land acknowledgement. So I am here in uh, my home on unceded Wichita land, stewarded by the Trichenyo speaking Ohlone people. And that's Berkeley, otherwise known as, in California. And I wanna start with this land acknowledgement to acknowledge the legacy that I live within that is the theft of land and genocide on the first peoples who've lived here. And to acknowledge that this is both a historical and a current reality. And I wanna bring focus for me that this land acknowledgement is not lip service, but it is rather a part of laying a foundation uh, that can serve as a guiding compass in our time together here and building into the future. And it's to help us to align in our, in our commitment to right relationship with each other and with the land and, that, and what that all must necessarily entail. And so part of what it must entail to me is acknowledging the history and the making of reparations and following indigenous leadership. So if you are in the, the Bay Area, um, we're going to put a link in the chat that you can check out. Um, and we encourage you to check out the, Sag the Sagorate Land Trust. You can make a voluntary land tax contribution there uh, to the Urban and Indigenous Women-Led Trust, that is the Segorite Land Trust. 
And so that link is in the chat box if you want to find out more and if you uh, want to learn how to make that uh, tax contribution to the indigenous peoples that are here on Ohlone land, the Ohlone peoples. And you can also uh, find out whose native land you're on through the next link that's gonna be shared in the chat box. Um, and that link, you can find out wherever you are, who the original peoples of that land are on. So this is for uh, the land acknowledgement and I just wanna take a moment to get once again feel in the body and let that rest, however it does. And then I want to make one more acknowledgement before we begin tonight, and that is the acknowledgement of being in the midst of a Black Lives Matter movement. And I was given um, the wording of Joyous Dawn, who is a member of the Thrive Choir, um, doing a Black Lives acknowledgement. And I want to just use her words because they're beautiful, and I want to give her the, um, I want to attribute this acknowledgement to her. So she says the current movement for black lives for the protection and safety of black people worldwide. She wanted to she wants to give this acknowledgement to this movement and to name that black life more than matters. Black lives are valuable, beautiful, worthy. She says it's important for me to name this as we talk about music and relationship to creating and liberation knowing that so much of our music today comes from diasporic legacies and wisdom of black people. So part of the money that we are collecting today or tonight is uh, going to be going to an organization called Reclaim Ugly. That's an org founded by a local to the Bay Area black femme named Vanessa Rochelle Lewis. And they are um, currently a uh, hosting an event called Black Healing October. That is a month of free workshops of all varieties hosted by and for black folks. And so you can learn more also about Reclaim Ugly and Black Healing October through the link that is um, going to be shared or is shared in the chat here. So these are our land, these are our acknowledgements we wanna start uh, the evening with. And now we're going to, um, start hearing and discussing and sharing um, you know the topic for the evening so I want to welcome our um, our panelists for tonight um, and what how we're going to do this is we're, we're we have a series of um, questions that we gathered up that we thought were kind of the juicy questions for the folks who are going to be sharing tonight. And so we'll be asking them some particular questions and then it's generally just a space to share people's uh, personal relationship and experience with getting into uh, this work of music within movements. So tonight we have um, Kyle, T, Mazen, Eva, um, and later Masumi who will be sharing. And I'm going to just start, um, since we don't really have a way to maybe highlight each one of them and say hello uh, easily enough, I'm just going to start one by one and we're going to um, start with Kyle. If Kyle wants to say hello. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? All right. So. And uh, I'll, go, I'll go ahead, Kyle, and, and give you your question first, and then you can take it away, OK? Cool. <laughs> so Kyle, thank you for um, coming and sharing tonight. And we had a couple questions uh, specifically designed for you. Um, and so you can answer this however feels best, um, but these are the, the prompts that, that we wanted to ask you. So the first question is, what, what is your relationship to the Thrive Street Choir origin story and how do you connect to it? And the second question is, why is music for you transformative, life-giving, generative, um, of movement building specifically? So however you want to share, uh, please go ahead. Awesome. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Eva. And thank you, everyone. Hello, family from all corners of 
the U.S. I don't know if we have anyone internationally here, but it's good to see you all be in this movement together. Um, I think I really appreciate those questions, um, but I think I'm going to start with a song and then I'll answer them just so that we can start singing because are there any singers on the call? Woo! Woo! Okay, yeah. So um, if you all, oh, uh, wow, okay, being blown up over here. Um, I'd love to see your faces while we sing. So if you're feeling comfortable and um, to uh, put your video on, that'd be great. But if not, it's, it's cool. Um, here we go. So Eva, if you could put the lyrics in the chat. Um, this is a song that um, I wrote with the Peace Poets for the Rise for Climate March back in 2018. And yeah, it's just like a fun song that's been traveling a little bit. You know, it's not one of those like famous street songs yet, but it's, you know, it's, it's making its rounds. Um, so it's called Rise for All Creation. So um, I'm going to sing it once all the way through so you can hear it in its fullness. And then we'll break down and do call and response so that you can... Um, acquaint yourself with it and then we'll we'll sing it all together once again but of course you'll be on mute so just imagine the chorus of the 30 of us singing together as we walk down the streets demanding for a fossil free future okay here we go this is rise for all creation by me and the peace poets we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for all creation all right here we go call and response we rise before the seas we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity but for all humanity we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for liberation we rise Rise, rise for liberation, we rise, rise for all creation, we rise, rise for all creation. Okay, everybody, you ready to sing it all together? One, two, a oh, one, two, three. We rise before the seas, we rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation I heard y'all. I heard y'all through the mute. Um, wow, y'all. Okay, cool. Thanks for singing with me. Um, and now, um, yeah, I'll answer some of these wonderful questions that Julian posed. Um, and Julian just cut me off whenever my time is up because I set a timer for myself but didn't press start. So just let me know. Um, but yeah, I'd love to tell you all a little bit about how the Street Choir was formed, Thrive Street Choir. So obviously, you know, music has been an incredible part of our social movements for literally ever. Um, you know, so we're not inventing anything here. We're just continuing the tradition of, of music movements, a long legacy. Um, you know, the women's movement, the civil rights movement, um, also the environmental movement of the 70s, and of course, long before that, too. Um, but, you know, in this moment of when, um, when Trump um, first got elected office four years ago, um, almost the four year anniversary now. Um, we, you know, I, w I was driving in a car with Eva. I think this was the origin story that we were just like, like, we got to sing at the protest. Like, where is the music? 
there's been there was just so many like in the Bay Area where we both grew up and lived. There's just so there were so many chants and just kind of like just kind of rah rah like you hear the same old chants every time energy and and we are musicians and we're like there's got to be a space for people who love art and music at these at these um, at these protests and and so we um, yeah we decided to to through through the umbrella of Thrive East Bay um, and building out of a, some of the beautiful music that was being created by the Thrive Choir we formed the Thrive Street Choir um, with the intention of sending song leaders out into the streets um, to demand uh, to support movements for justice for immigration justice for climate justice for Black Lives Matter um, and you know since then four years ago we've we're still here and and we've become even more relevant over time um, you know we've sent people out um, song leaders we, we've trained song leaders and and sent song leaders out to lead music with groups of people um, all over the Bay Area um, leading music for thousands of people and yeah it's just been an incredibly inspiring experience just for me number one just to feel welcome at these events that my my gifts um, are welcome and in fact supportive of creating an atmosphere of joy of peace of beauty um, some incredible person please, someone better find this quote the author for me right now but just like if the if you can't dance at my Liber protests or if, you, if the revolution if you can't dance at my revolution I want to be part of it I just butchered that I'm so sorry but that's just the essence of what I'm feeling it's just that you know we don't have to always arrive at the protests like and have the dominant energy be anger um, fierce rage is an incredible important motivating force and for me it doesn't need to all be about rage but just a love for justice and I express my love through my voice and I just know that at the, uh, as we've, um, you know, led, led songs at all of these events that it's, that people have been really transformed, people have cried, um, and that there's music for all moods. There's, there's music that gets the choir, that gets the crowd moving and shaking. There's, there's, there's songs that are contemplative and allow us drop to our knees in prayer and in solace. Um, and... Yeah, you know, and and it's just like in this this Thrive Street Choir just inspired me to take this idea of of singing in protests around the world. Um, at the UN climate talks last year, I or no, not last year. It was in 27, 2018, um, We led a huge singing protest inside the UN um, against the White House panel promoting coal as a climate strategy, and you know, singing is what is what helped us not get kicked out of the UN and, and it helped make front page headlines. I'll post a video in a second about that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, being asked, the Thrive Street Choir was asked to compose a songbook for the Rise for Climate March in 2018, which was sent to, you know, 10,000 people and just very helpful. Um, and finally, you know, just in June, our Black Lives Matter um, Oakland curfew protest was just an incredible moment where we gathered together and then um, in a in a park three blocks away and marched like I don't I forget how many people like 300 strong singing and then when we arrived to APTP and all the coalition at Jack London not not Jack London Square 14th and Broadway um, they just started erupting in, in like they, they paused the program and started clapping as we arrived and just it was just these are all just moments in time and and I just know that as the world continues to burn and unravel that like music is gonna keep us um, keep us alive keep us strong keep us connected um, and in love with each other um, I'll thank you if you can find your wrap-up line that's my wrap-up line <laughs> yep thank you so much Kyle and thank you for starting us off with that beautiful uh, song that you shared and I just want to um, let everyone know that they are um, very welcome to take any of the songs shared and share them. Uh, you can take the lyrics from the chat or you can record them yourself and you are welcome to uh, share them out. And also if you go to our website, the song, the song book is there and you are welcome to find any of the songs through the Thrive Street Choir website songbook. So thank you again, Kyle. 
and uh, we are going to um, ask T to share next. T, thank you for being here. Thank you for um, sharing your experience and your music tonight. And the questions that we designed for you, T, um, that you are welcome to take away or you're welcome to share however you feel called to share tonight is um, about our responsibility to acknowledge lineage, uh, lineages of music and our own identities in relationship to the music and movement spaces. Um, and how can music be used to build communities? So uh, if that feels so inspiring for you to answer or however you feel called tonight. Thanks so much, Julian, and hi, everybody. Again, my name is T, my pronouns are they or she, and ooh, I feel nervous being on Zoom tonight. I just, I'm straight out of two weeks of solitude. I've just been on retreat and I didn't talk to anyone for two weeks. <laughs> and so I feel like giddy being on, on this call and seeing some of your faces who I haven't seen in a while, who I haven't talked to in a while. So I'm really glad to be here. And, and one thing I'll say just to start, oh, hi, Naomi, I just saw you on the screen. That's sweet to see you. Just to start, I'll say that um, one thing on the retreat that came to me is, is songs. As I was in silence, songs would come to me and the songs that we sing together as Thrive Street Choir would come to me. And it's something that, that was so inspiring as I was in this time of silence. So maybe just to start the thread that I'll go into, just to say, yeah, I feel um, the way that songs come with us. We carry them with us wherever we go. And there are ways that we can memorize and remember, remember what we're about and remember, um, yeah, remember, remember how, what our purpose is and how we want to show up. And, and it can also show us on the streets. I think a really big piece of song on the streets for me is reminding us why, why we are in a place, reminding us what we're there for as the people who are singing so that we don't forget um, it's both to send a message to people outside and also so that we know for ourselves why we're there. And um, I want to share, I'll share a little bit more in, in speaking, but I want to share a song with you along that thread of reminding ourselves, what are we doing here on the streets if we're singing on the streets? Um, I, this is a song that came through me a few years ago, three or four years ago, and um, it's called May This Body Be a Bridge. Some of you I know on the, on the call know it. And I'm just going to teach you part of it. And this is a song that because they're, the first part is short, but there are more lyrics. So I don't, I don't actually often sing it on the streets, but other people have told me that they've sung it and it's worked. So, so take it with you if you want. Um, I'll do call and response. It goes like this. And I'll tell you the story after. May this body be a bridge. For the healing of this land. Try that. May this body be a bridge for the healing of this land. Listen. May the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands. May the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands. Try that. May the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands. Call and response one more time. May this body be a bridge for the healing of this land. May the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands. May the river, may the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands. So I'll let you take that. I'm just going to sing you the second part so you hear it. And if you know it, and this will help you remember, you can sing it over the top if you want. We are, we are born from the water. We are, we are made from the land. Teach us, teach us, oh great mother, to bring, to bring peace to this land. May this body all together, may this body be a bridge for the healing of 
this land, may the river flow through. May the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands real soft. May this body be a bridge for the healing of this land. May the river, river flow through us, cleansing greed from our, I give it everything you got one more time. May this body be a bridge for the healing of this land. May the river flow through us, cleansing greed from our hands. Thank you, T. If you could um, quickly share the content. Yeah. Thank sure. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'll give you real quick context. Um, thanks for singing that with me. Feel free to take it with you. This song came through on Lakota land. I had spent a number of months at Standing Rock in so-called North Dakota. And after spending uh, some many times in front of lines of police and riot gear was asking the question of like, what does it mean for us to, what does it mean for us to stand here? And, and even though we can't measure the impact, does this have an impact? And just, it felt like, yeah, at some point, like, okay, we're putting our bodies on the line and what does this actually mean? And, and a friend who grew up in Palestine, Saeed Abdallah is his name said that in the Palestinian liberation movement, um, he said, may this body be a bridge for the healing of this land. And he was like, I'm willing to give up my life for the freedom of my people. And, and with his permission, I, I, sh I put it into this song. Um, and, and really it feels like, it, yeah, an answer to this question for me said these words and I was like, oh yeah, may this body be a bridge. We have been given these bodies to use in some way and we get to use them for, for freedom, for liberation, for justice. And even if it doesn't feel like it makes a difference, we have the opportunity to do something. And, and if for those of us who our bodies aren't already on the line, um, that, that we get to say, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stand here, stand here for justice. And this song, as we sing it, and this, I'll just finish with this, as we sing it in those moments, it can be a reminder to us of why we're there, that we're there saying, yeah, I don't, I can't see the impact this makes maybe right now, but I can sing this song and it can remind me this body can be a bridge for liberation and this song can support that and the song can remind me why I'm here and, and give me strength as I'm standing in a place of, of danger or at least of, of wanting and asking for justice. Thanks. Thank you so much, T. Wow, what a beautiful story. So rich. Um, I'm so sad that we, I, I you know, five minutes is not enough time, <laughs> obviously, to, to be asking people, folks to share. So I'm sorry that we're having to, um, you know, rush people's share time. But next we want to um, say hello to Mazen. And, you know, um, I'm just meeting Mazen for the first time tonight, and now I'm forgetting if I'm saying your name right. Mazin like Jazin. Mazin, okay, Mazin. Welcome, Mazin. Thank you for joining us and being here. And so the two questions we wanted to ask you, Mazin, is why is music transformative, life-giving, generative movement building for you? And the second question is, what is your personal origin story or highlight experiences around music and movements? Um, and again, these are prompts. I got you. can you. take it where you choose. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I already decided what I wanted to say before you asked me the question, so. Cause I just love music so much. Um, yeah. So first of all, just thank you, you know, for hosting this event and um, Thrive Street Choir is how I found Thrive Choir in a lot of ways and got to reconnect with Kyle and yeah, just grateful to be here and talking about this. Um, you know, I would say that the first thing is that um, it's really through music, movement music that I kind of found my spiritual and political and many forms of identity and like, it was, you know, the Nina Simone, Curtis Mayfield, Bob Marley, um, Tupac Shakur, Marvin Gaye, Tina Turner, like listening to all these people, I would like devour their discography as if 
I was starving for meaning and a sense of purpose in this world. Oh, actually, I was starving for that. And, and you know, more than any academic or any book or any uh, film, you know, it was these these songs and this music that really gave me a sense of what's going on in the world and a sense of meaning and a sense of how to hold all of what's, what, what is and, and how to hold who I am. And the other thing that's amazing about music that, that differs... You know, you know, makes it different than a dissertation or a book is that you also get to hear them sing about love and relationships and sex and nature and all these different things. So you get to see this dynamic whole picture of a human being relating to the world. And um, for me personally, you know, as someone, my family uh, immigrated from Sudan uh, shortly before I was born. And so I was always kind of confused about who I was in the world and how my kind of identity was supposed to fit. And I don't know if anyone else has ever asked this question, but like, you know, why was I born X, Y, Z? Like, why was I born a man? Why was I born black? Why was I born, you know, the first generation? Like, why, why, you know? And I think that music really helped me to, to start to not necessarily find answers to those questions, but to find meaning in those questions and to, to find reasons and to see like, well, you know, Nina Simone would never have created this medicine that I needed so badly if she didn't have, you know, this experience in the story. And, and, and it's, it's all of these things really, um, so that's that's what music has done for me. It's it's really been more of an educational tool than anything else. I think that I've related to in, in how I understand the world. Um, and I think the last thing about it too is, um, you know, like as I was saying, you know, my parents are from Sudan, and so the ethnic group that my parents are from in Sudan, which is there considered Arab, and the people from the south of Sudan are considered black. There's just like a different way that the racial caste system was set up by colonization there than it is here we were kind of the like um privileged class or the pri privileged ethnic group in sudan so you know hearing the music of sudanese artists and hearing the music of south sudanese artists that was actually how i found uh, a kind of relationship and how to hold who i was and, and the complexity of who i am and even my ancestry uh, was through music so um yeah i think that it's through through music that we we develop these sense of shared values and and you can meet someone you've never met and talk and feel like a vibe because it's like oh yeah like we both listen to lauren hill so we we kind of have that feel so um that is my answer to the question and i want to kind of get right into the song because uh, i want us to have some time to really uh, get into this one so this song um is i know it to be called forget your perfect offering um and I know it to be a rendition of a Leonard Cohen song, and I actually am not sure if there are other origins. Are often there are like other origins of songs, and so if anyone knows, there's a lot of really great song keepers on the call. Please do correct me. Um, and I'm modeling what to do when you don't know really the origin of the song, is you you know say what you do know, and then you um, you invite anyone to correct you. Um, so this song I love because I think there's so much. Uh, ways that uh, patriarchy or white supremacy or whatever the hell we want to call this, you know, illness makes us feel like we have to be perfect to do anything and we have to be perfectly, fully, completely woke at all times in order to be valuable to the movement and uh, all of these different things. And uh, sometimes it's really about surrendering to what we have and what's before us and what we can do. And this song really brings me back to that space. So I think that's what it's useful for. It's very upbeat too. So um, I think it's a great way to like help us get out of our heads and into the like, yo, let's take the next step and, and do what we can. So this is a call and response song. I will first sing it so you can get the melody and then you will uh, call and response with me and I'll got a little shaker for support. Do we feel ready to go? All right. Forget your perfect offering, then you, dun, 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 that's where you go. Then ring the bells that still can ring, and you would go right here when you sing. There is a crack in everything. Da, 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 da. Then this part, that's how, that's how the light, the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. So let me show you that part again. It's that's how, that's how, it's very quick. The light, the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in gets in that's how the light gets in so it's kind of got that swing so that's the melody um and you can just keep following along um and it turns out that jeff mooney is who gave it the new melody the new tune so thank you for that correction and um the second part has the same melody and it has different lyrics as you can see in the chat there so let's begin and everyone just uh let's just warm up our voices me 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 
Forget your perfect offering, forget your perfect offering, just ring the bells that still can ring, just ring the bells that still can ring, there is a crack in everything, that's how the light, the light gets in, that's how the light gets in, that's how, that's how the light, the light gets in, that's how the light gets in, forget your perfect offering, oh yeah. Just ring the bells that still can ring. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. Songbirds singing in the break of day. Start again, I heard them say. Start again, I heard them say. Mm, don't dwell on what is passed away. Don't dwell on what is passed away. Or how, or, or what is yet, or yet to be, or what is yet to be, or what is yet to be, or what is yet to be. Songbirds singing in the break of day. Start again, I heard them say. Don't dwell on what is passed away. Don't dwell on what is passed away, or what is yet to be or oh, what is yet to be or oh, what is yet to be may we live here in this moment and act from this moment and what we see before us from this present moment let us not dwell too much on what is yet to be because we really do not know in this world of uncertainty so May this song be medicine for us all, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mazin. Mm. <laughs> and thank you for that ending prayer. Um, okay, I love that Leonard Cohen song that I guess also is Jeff Mooney. Okay, thank you, Mazin. So we are going to have our final panelist, Eva, is also co-hosting. Come on. And um, Eva, I'm gonna give you your questions. That we have uh, designed for you. So we have, we, we have four questions for you, Eva. Music propels us and gives us Oh, I'm sorry, that it, we do not. We have two questions for you, Eva. <laughs> the first one is, what is the uh, your TS your Thrive Street Choir origin story, and how do you connect to it? And the second one is, what is your personal origin story or highlight experience around music and movements? So, Eva, take it away. Thank you, thank you, everybody who's gone before. Set the good tone. So. Um, as you heard from Kyle, my origin story was driving in that car in 2016 and just putting our heads together as, as buddies and saying, let's create this. Um, but that was built on so many years of inspiration. I grew up in Marin County, um, where I am right now, in with sort of an extended community of like parents, friends of parents and um, of activists and organizers who had uh, spent much of their lives organizing in the labor movement and the anti-war movement and the women's rights movement and the civil rights movement. And I had heard a lot of stories just about that made me just feel very starry eyed about activism and organizing. And um, it's, it became a passion of mine too. And wanting to find my place in this as a as a 14 year old um, growing up in a very privileged bubble, mostly white upper class Marin, but also at the start of the Iraq war um, and so many issues um, that I turned from a pretty shy middle schooler into a vocal activist in high school, um, getting inspiration from other young people who were leading. Um, and and so my experience just learning from others and planning marches and rallies and walkouts and all of those good things um, 
was that music is essential to creating those spaces. Um, and um, I, I didn't necessarily consider myself a musician um, until I started, until I found my voice through drumming. So I, was, I did not uh, identify as a singer. I identified as a drummer. And uh, many of you who know me know that I rarely go anywhere without a shaker or a drum um, and just love percussion. So I started bringing percussion to marches and sort of being drawn to the other, um, the other people who, ha who held that bass beat. And for me, it was a way to really find my voice in those spaces. Even if I didn't want to be loud on the megaphone, I could do the behind the scenes organizing and then carry the beat. Um, some stories in the past few years that have led me to this moment of the street choir was um, I joined a movement and became pretty active in a movement called If Not Now, which is a movement of young American Jews um, working to transform our community's relationship with the Israeli occupation of Palestine, uh, which is a pretty controversial thing to take on in many Jewish communities. And I noticed that the reason that I chose to get involved in that out of all of the other movements grabbing for my attention was because they were unapologetically Jewish in public in a ritual, doing like wearing Jewish garb, which can feel um, daunting um, in a world where there's still anti-Semitism and singing and praying in public, not, not just chanting, but singing at, in Hebrew and sometimes Yiddish. And, I, and these were things that like part of my internalized anti-Semitism was like afraid to do or thought was unattractive or uncool. But then I saw all these really cool activists doing it and like blocking the street in Berkeley and having like a Passover Seder and singing. And, and so that's for me where I learned that music was super essential to our, our movements, building off of all of our movement ancestors. And then I got to really um, put that into practice when I went to Palestine two years ago. Uh, in 2017, I went on a trip, a delegation with 150 Jews from around the world. Um, we met up in, in Palestine and we, we decided to take on direct action, nonviolent direct action. It was called Center for Jewish Nonviolence. And basically we, the idea was putting our pretty, our more privileged bodies on the line led by Israeli and Palestinian activists to do um, direct action that would allow their movement to proceed further and get international media attention so, so that hopefully they could um, garner strength. And um, I just remember, I will never forget the visceral feeling of being out there linked arms with my comrades and singing all the way through as the IDF, the, the Israeli military came and ripped down our camp and was pretty violent uh, and aggressive, but the song just carried me through. And we, were, we decided to sing in Hebrew at, towards Israeli soldiers so, so that they would, that, that it would hit them. Um, and it was just very powerful and fuels me and, fuel, and has helped me do actions that I wouldn't have the courage to do, but when I'm in the flow of the song, I can take more risks. So that's what I want to share with you. Thank you for listening. And um, I would like to share a song um, that I wrote, and I'm not much of a songwriter, but I, it came out of me a, f uh, a few months ago during quarantine with a friend, Elena Pinsky, who couldn't be on the call tonight, but sends her love and we wrote it. Um, so it's one of my beginning songs. You can give me feedback later. And it's really, I would say that this song uh, could be for any type of action, especially now. When these times are calling, we take to the street. My spirit is soaring, I feel my heart beat. Mask on my face and love in my eyes. Justice is near, I feel it here. If you are not free, then I can't be free. If I am not free, then you can't be free. If they are not free, then we can't be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repeat after me or join in with me. 
When these times are calling, we take to the streets. My spirit is soaring, I feel my heart beat. Mask on my face and love in my eyes. Justice is near, I feel it here. If you are not free, then I can't be free. If I am not free, then you can't be free. If they are not free, then we can't be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Eva, for writing the song and sharing it with us mm -hmm. and being brave enough to share it tonight. Thank you. Y'all, I am new to these stories um, that everyone's sharing tonight, um, you know, from all these folks that have been the foundation of Thrice Street Choir, and I just feel so honored. I, I feel sad that there's not a lot more space to ask questions and to expand and to just talk more um, because, wow, it's there's so much richness and, um, yeah, there's just so much in each one of your stories that has compelled Thrice Street Choir to form and um, to be what it is. And I'm new to a lot of these stories, being new um, to Thrive Street Choir. So I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge all of that and thank you for your sharing your stories, but also just living your stories, you know, and, 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 and helping to build this, um, this movement of bringing song and not just build, you know, rebuild it from, from, from the time when it maybe had more momentum than it does now so that we can kind of rebuild the momentum um, here at this time and in the places that we're in. So thank you again so much for each of the panelists for being here and for sharing your stories. And um, I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna turn it over to Eva now to talk about um, how we're all gonna share together in, in breakout rooms. Thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is have a chance for you all to soak up hopefully the inspiration that you got from that listening and those songs and share with each other kind of just like we did and so we invite you i'm going to send you out into groups of four in a minute and the questions are to introduce yourself name pronouns where you live and basically what resonated with you from the panel so you'll share that what resonated and then i'm just putting these in the chat as well and then round two, so we recommend that everyone shares once. And then two would be, how is music medicine to you? Or have you had any powerful experiences with the intersection of music and justice? We know that you all have many stories, just like we do. So um, we're gonna do this for 10 minutes. So um, keep it brief, but deep, <laughs> and um, make sure everyone has a chance to share. And I will send you out, in, and then we'll come back. We'll do a little uh, sharing out of what we learned and we'll hear from Masumi about who more about how you get involved in this work. Make sure to click the accept invitation. Hello. If you're still in this room, let me know if you just want to be here and chill or if you want me to send you to a room. I like to go to a room. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. I'll send you to a Did you do you know if the invitation didn't pop up? No invitation pop. Weird. Okay. Why was the only one in my room? Oh, okay. Um how about we just do a room here? Is Mary, Leah, and Riley, are you interested in conversing? Yeah, let's sure. Just, let's just do it here. Hi, Leah. Hi. <laughs> mm. Who wants to go first? We can start. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Met. I actually ended up, um, yeah, it just feels really yummy, Eva. I'm like, I can't believe we don't know each other. Um, 
I got really into song uh, when I helped start Never Again Action. And my song actually traveled and it was the song everyone was singing. And that was so new and wild. And they just feel like, what happened? Um, and ended up leading and teaching song, like nationally. Um, and I'm very close with a lot of people on this call. So it just feels very yummy. And I just think song can change the world. Um, okay, really resonated with a lot of the panel. My name is Met. I use they, them. I currently live in Austin, Texas, but have been living in Jerusalem for the past while. So I'm just back in the States and I don't quite know where I'm supposed to be yet. So I'm in between places and I'm gonna pass it to Deborah. Thanks for sharing, Emma. Uh, Deborah, they, them, Ohlone territory in Oakland. Um, and I will pass it on as well because round one was just a little introduction. So who do we have? Uh, Aaliyah Kaplan. Hi, Deborah. I think I met you at the Women's Herbal Symposium. A few yeah, days. I think we watched this together. But yeah, <laughs> so cool. Um, yeah, I just jumped in because I was just at an acupuncture session. So I'm a little dreamy right now, but um, I'm in Santa Cruz and my pronouns are she and they and yeah, I really just jumped in like five minutes ago. So I just really wanted to see what this is all about because I love singing and activism and getting to know Julian a little bit more and sounds like it's been really cool so far. So I'm excited to, to see more. And I can pass it on to, yeah, Riley. Wanting to participate. Yeah, for sure. Um, hey, everybody. My um, my camera is not working great, so I've kind of given it a break from trying to get it to work. Uh, I'm Riley. I go by they and them pronouns. I am based in Berkeley on Ohlone land. Uh, I also came in late. It's been a hectic day. I'm glad I made it. Heard great things about y'all. Eva, I think that I get a lot of emails from you from If Not Now. Um, I have a friend who like recently brought me into that. Um, so hello, hello to everyone, but yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, and I think that music can be a really powerful way to bring people together and bring people towards change. Um, Julian, do you wanna talk next? Yeah, well, you're on mute right now. I wanna pass my introduction because I already gave a big introduction at the beginning. Um, and so I want to pass and maybe we can just go on to round two. Who's got some stories or musings on music and justice? I'll go. Um, I thought it was really powerful what you said, Eva. I also just jumped in right when you were speaking about it all. Um, I grew up in a very heady space where like the brain and like thought is really valued. Um, and that created like a lot of head and heart space. Like how's my heart racing to it? And I think without me like realizing it, like a uh, song was kind of accessing that diaphragm space a little bit more visceral. Um, still not fully. I'm really into learning about the body and I think it's really amazing that we have like three diaphragms. We have like a vocal diaphragm up here and we have like a urogenital diaphragm down here and like uh, our heart lung diaphragm and just like trying to be in those three basins a bit more and song has been an access to that that throughout my life that was okay and safe to be in in like more intellectual spaces. Uh, so that's the way it's been medicine, not specifically politically in that way. Shamati, I've spoken. Hey, Barty.
We just have a few more minutes before this um, breakout room is going to close, but um, if no one is totally ready, I'll just give a real small, um, yeah, my experience of music as medicine. I, I started to really find a deeper resonance and relationship with singing um, about four years or five years ago, maybe, when I started singing with um, a community choir called Kitka. And they sing Eastern European folk music that um, the, the Kitka group does. And I'm in their community choir. And it really started to orient me differently to um, connecting to ancestry in a way that was visceral and in my body through singing songs that have been a tradition for you know generation upon gener generation upon generation and so um i've just had a experience of music as um something i can tap into that is just so beyond what we're singing about um and for time reasons i won't say much more than that but i you know through singing with with this group that was singing particularly um, to continue a lineage of music in the way that it's always been passed on. It, it was something for me that was a way to connect to that, to ancestors before who've been singing that song. And, and um, it just, for movement, in, in relationship to movements, it's something that I feel so viscerally in my body when I'm singing that's connecting me to, um, a support of the, all the people who have supported the movement and who've, who've passed these songs on, who've, you know, carried resilience in their bodies through these songs, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been powerful medicine for me in that way. That's so awesome, Julian. I love Kitka and I didn't know they had a community choir. <laughs> I'm gonna just broadcast a message to everyone saying one more minute. So if anyone wants to share. I just wanna sing something together. Oh, do you wanna lead us? <laughs> so, I could. I'm gonna lead one of T's songs because I love it. Um, this came to her in the backyard. Your heart knows the way home. 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 Listen, the birds are singing, singing their freedom. Listen, the birds are singing, singing their freedom. The forest will speak to you. In the silence, the forest will speak to you. In the silence, your heart knows the way home. 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 This and the birds are singing, singing their freedom. This and the birds are singing, singing their freedom. The forest will speak to you. In the silence, the forest will speak to you. In the silence. You can keep singing up one in if you feel like it. Your heart knows the way home. Your heart knows the way home. That was just for tea. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Thanks, Emmett, for singing us back in with T's beautiful song. We hope you had a joyous sharing and got to meet new people or connect with old people. 
So Julian's going to facilitate us to share some learnings. So um, we are going to not, ha we don't have a lot of time for sharebacks, but if you will, um, type in the chat any, th any little nuggets that you gleaned from your group chatting or what kind of like distilled in yourself as you had time to sort of resonate with, with the uh, panel sharings. If you'll just share them in the chat here, we can read them out. And if anyone feels, if anyone feels really called to put your voice out and um, speak it out loud, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get your voice on, off mute. So some things being shared in the chat, and you know what, I'm sorry, I'm, this chat is just kind of like going faster than I can do it. So if, Leah, if Ava, you wanna um, also read out some things you're seeing come through in the chat. I see a lot of woohoo, beautiful, thanks. Oh, scroll down um, oh. where I, I did the first learning was that we have multiple diaphragms. Remembering text through song incredibly powerful activists and healers up in here. Give us some more. Does anyone want to share anything in their, in their, with their voice? I'll share with my voice because I'm a lousy typist and it's going too slow. <laughs> There's, there were a lot of, I wrote down a lovely, bunch of lovely sort of quotes. I'm paraphrasing one in particular that said, um, where one of my crew said, music helps us find not the answers to questions, but the meaning of them. And then from that, we can go and find our own answers. I might have gotten that wrong, but it sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Who said that? One of the people in, um, in our group. Um, I had said it, but I was, was like paraphrasing Mazin. <laughs> It's <laughs> yeah, a paraphrasing of paraphrase. Yeah. And Dave is writing how music brings people in through story. Paraphrasing what was shared. Glad I'm on the right side of history, singing with people I know and don't know. Yes. Amen. So thank you for sharing those learnings and for everything that wasn't said as well. We're now going to, the last component of our event is um, really important. It's hearing our history of a little bit more of the, the logistics of how, who, who Thrive Street Choir is and how do you get involved? Because you are all the future of this group as well. So passing it over to Masumi. Hey, I am going to share my screen uh, just for a second. Um, so yeah, this is us, Thrive Street Choir, hopefully um, turning into a beautiful flower of many activists bringing our music to the movement. Um, I also just put on the, um, this slideshow because it has closed captioning, which is a really cool tool that I just learned. And um, for anyone who might not be able to understand my very fast talking, um, this might help you. I'm a fast talker. so. Uh, in terms of our history and local work, um, Kyle spoke a little bit to our origin story. Um, and I think one thing that I want to say really right away, because people get as confused all the time, is that there is a lot of overlap between Thrive Street Choir and Thrive Choir and Thrive Community Choir, but we were actually all three separate things and we work differently. So I'm a part, Kyle, Mazin and I are all a part of Thrive Choir, but when we're part of Thrive Street Choir, what makes this really special is that anyone can be a part of it. Anyone can be involved. Um, it's not an auditioned thing. There are no prerequisites. What is happening is that we just all care about the movement and we wanna show up. And so people show up and um, when we get together, whoever that is, we are the choir or sometimes it's just one song leader who shows up and it's we come like it's oftentimes just been me and I just show up and I have a microphone and I've been invited by the organization and I have a song that just like you all learned a song now I have a song that I 
um, is easy to teach and I teach it to the people there and people sing it and they are the choir. So that, that's kind of what I love about Thrive Street Choir is that we're, we're organic and um, whoever shows up is the choir and we learn together and we just do our best. Um, in terms of the local groups that we connect with, and we're always looking to connect with more people first off. Um, we have a Google form. So if you know of anybody or connected to anybody um, who you think could benefit from having music at their movements, please get us in touch. Um, in particular, we're really interested in frontline organizations and um, looking at like racial, social justice and um, environmental justice. Um, but yeah, just like please connect with us. We just care about, you know, helping our community and mobilizing people through song. Um, but some of the organizations we have done things with is uh, an, an indigenous group called Idle No More. Um, also connected to them is the Brazil Solidarity Action Network, um, as well as um, Anti-Police Terror Project. And, um, and then a, a lot of uh, environmental things as well. Like I think the um, March for Jobs and Justice was one of their biggest uh, moments that I was just super happy to be a part of. Um, and, most recently, we had this action here in Oakland. Um, this was also an association with the Anti-Police Terror Project. And um, I'm just going to show a small clip from it, but you can see us. And uh, I believe it's a song leader, Ryan Camaro, going to be singing this clip. Um, can someone give me a thumbs up if you can see uh, the change to Vimeo? Is it looks like Vimeo? OK, good. Oh, Madison. Oh, I'm going to share my uh, computer audio. One second. Sharing screen. OK, back. Just real quick, Masumi, there's a setting right. for optimized for video. Just did it. Uh, you got it? OK, cool. That's, that's why I had to stop sharing my screen. OK, here we go. I'm here right now. Do you feel? Yes, I feel. And do you hear? The reason why the Panthers was created is because you Oakland has a history so of police brutality and in. terrorism against black people. Yeah. Stay on their heads. Stay radical. Whatever they bring our way, we gonna push and the fuck do back. You hear? Yes, we feel the spirit. So um, I'm going to stop the sharing there. Kyle posted the video into the, into the chat. We can post it again if you want to see the whole thing. Um, so people ask if we're still um, involved with actions, even though um, we're in COVID times. And the answer is not as much, not as much, but it, you know, social justice in the world, it continues whether or not we are here in our homes. And so we do our best to be safe and to social distance and wear masks. Um, but uh, it's, it's important that, you know, taking safety precautions in mind, um, we can still show up for the movements that matter a lot to us. Um, so it, that's, that's a little bit about us. Um, and I see that we're short on time. So I think the main thing I want to say is like, please get in touch with us. Please let us know if your organization or other organizations you know um, would like our support. And if you want to be a song leader, there's also a place in the form that'll show you how to get started in that process. And it's, it's so nice to be able to onboard new, new people and to broaden the community of skilled people singing. Um, so I think we can probably move on to uh, closing. Which is, is, you, is that you, Julian? Sure. And I just want to see real quick. Um, I don't think we sent out the um, the link for people to um, fill out the form in case they are interested in learning more about becoming a song leader. I just chatted it. So um, we're going to do a closing where we share some takeaways from tonight and then as we're doing that in a, in a few minutes we'll allow you to have some quiet time to fill out the form uh, and Kyle's going to sing us out. So maybe before we do that let's just share like what we're um, 
what we're leaving with, um, just something put on, put in the chat or raise your hand and we'll call on you to take yourself off mute. Something you're inspired to take out into the world from this event. Because we want to really fill ourselves with this hope and this strength that we really need desperately during these times. And then we'll be following up with you, as Masumi said, um, to, to get you plugged in if you want. And while people are typing it out on the chat, if you are, or if you're about to shout it out, also just to give one more big thanks to everyone for sharing in the chat rooms and on the panels and sharing out loud before we finish here and, and have Kyle sing us out. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. Can we sing something together to close? Yes, Kyle's going to lead us. Yeah. We'll do that in a minute after we share takeaways. So I'm seeing in the chat, songs don't need to be complex to be impactful and connecting song is valid. Can this network expand beyond the Bay Area? We need to thrive street choirs everywhere. I think that can happen and the connection just needs, the communication just needs to start to, to spread that. If you know, know people in other places who want to plant this type of thing, you can put us in touch. Uh, we might, we could even share with you the recording from tonight to share with them. Can we stop sharing the PowerPoint for one sec so I can see if anyone has their hands raised <laughs> to share out? Maybe we could just see a sh like a thumbs up sideways or down, like if you're maybe interested in doing song leading. Oh my God, I'm seeing I some. See a lot I'm of seeing almost all the way there. <laughs> hey. We'll take it, we'll take it. And you get really good training, good quality training from great people if you if you sign up for that. Feeling reinvigorated by song and movement. Thanks, Dave. Oh, I wanna put out another plug. If you are connected with activist or organizing groups that you think maybe not, uh, should be connected with our offerings for song connect us because that's sort of how we function is we need to help build that relationship with grassroots movements. I think maybe we're ready to. Let's do the to, form. To, to do the, oh, everyone's doing the form still. Yeah, so again, welcoming you to fill out this form and as you do that Kyle's gonna provide some song for your enjoyment Okay, um, is, is, is it my time? Yes, everyone keep filling out your comments as Kyle sings with us. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm making a last minute switch on my song choice after consul consulting <laughs> um, uh, one of our um, amazing song leaders. Um, Oh gosh, wait, maybe that's gonna throw me off. Um, oh no, let's You're do this one. You're doing great, we, have, we love you. You're doing great. Thank you, thanks babe. Okay, let's do this one. Um, and maybe T can help me find the origin and put it in the chat. Um, Cause I just learned it, but it's so good. And it's just been in my head um, and just like helps, it has been helping me. Um, ground in the impermanence of everything and as we get off this call i'm sure we're going to be bombarded by strange news um so yeah may this song and just may our collective singing together tonight may just benefit benefit all beings um okay i learned this one from jesse who's in the choir as well and uh, I'll sing it once, and then we'll do call and response. 
I believed in solid ground until I saw the earth in motion in the winds of steady change and in the ever rolling ocean. All right, call and response. Here we go. I believed in solid ground. Now you, I believed in solid ground until I saw the earth in motion. Until I saw the earth in motion in the winds of steady change. Now you, in the winds of steady change and in the ever rolling ocean now you in the ever rolling ocean all together everybody five six seven i believed in solid ground until I saw the earth in motion in the winds of steady change and in the ever rolling ocean. Here we go one more time. I believed in solid ground until I saw the earth in motion in the winds of steady change and in the ever rolling ocean and uh i encourage you all to check the link that he posted because she puts the um the writer puts all of the different parts there's harmony parts it's epic it's so beautiful Oh, thank you. So just taking a final look around with deep gratitude for our song ancestors and antrixes and and um, all the people who have done the work for us to be able to be singing here safely and soundly. Thank you all for taking time to come here and build this community. Thanks to everyone who was on the panel and for Julian for being a, such a b amazing uh, facilitator of this flow tonight. Yeah, thank you everyone for sharing. Have a good night. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you everybody, keep singing. Good to see you, Kyle. Miss me, miss y'all. T. My friend. Mazen, will you stay on? Or everybody, if you have two minutes, stay on. Naomi. Bye. Mm -hmm. I believe ah. you're in solid ground. Solid ground. Yeah, I know you. Can I share my? Yeah. I want to share my sound. That song has so many parts. It's you should listen to the listen to the recording if you can that I put in the chat. It's it's so good. It's so good. Annie Annie Zilstra can can do something to a group of people singing that is unbelievable. She's, she's like truly a professional song leader. Where is she? Uh, she's in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Last I, last I knew. She teaches Balkan singing. And she's, she's like almost the same age as me, I think. But she just, yeah, she's just like, She's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Are you She's gonna? In... Are you gonna play what? that? Oh, I was trying, but I don't know how to share my sound. I have to.
go for dinner? Was there just something? Yeah, I'm just going to stop the recording. Um...